All right, this is a really cool root. In ancient Greece, the name for city-states, the name for the different settlements that were developed enough to where there was enough of a population for them to compete with each other economically, politically, etc., and to have sovereignty, in other words, to be able to rule themselves and not be able to be stomped on by any other city-states, were called polis. E-I-S would be the plural. So this is an ancient Greek word, polis, and it's its own root. It doesn't go back further to any other root, um, as far as we know. And so polis equals city-state. Okay, and the reason why it's called a city-state is because it was small enough to feel like a city to where, um, at least a tiny city, where most people knew each other, you know, recognized each other. Such a, even in Athens, yet the most you had about 100,000 citizens at one time. And it's called a state because of its sovereignty. Because officially, at least, it couldn't be pushed around by any other city-states. Okay, so that's where it comes from. Now, as you could probably guess, words like politics, political, and all that stuff uh, come from this. But there's more to it. There's more to it. You'll see how it branches out into other things, including cosmetics. All right, so there's a cliff, cliffhanger for you. What is politics? Uh, what are politics? Some do it singular, some plural. It all comes down to different permutations of this root polis. A politeia in ancient Greece was the word for, or at least comes as close as we can in, in English, and especially in the US, to the idea of a constitution which literally means the state of standing together. That's what a constitution is. We'll get to the stand later, that route later. Um, so a politeia is a um, constitution. And so when you talk about the polity, you have a former process of civil government or constitution, but even more to the point, an organized society. A state is a political entity. Okay, so what's the difference? A polis has to do with the people being part of a settlement, and polity gets across even more, or emphasizes even more the idea that they're organized according to some kind of laws, like a law code, and or um, a constitution. So in the case of ancient Greece, it began with, began with the people, the populus, right, or the equivalent in Greek. I won't confuse you, so I won't throw that out yet, but the equivalent. A course or principle of action adopted or proposed by a government, etc. Administration's controversial economic policies. So a policy, a course or principle that is determined by, established by a polity, okay? And a polity, remember, comes from a polis. So it all goes back to the polis. It all goes back to the um, collective, or the collectivity of people in ancient Greece in one area, separated by high mountains in various valleys throughout Greece. Um, and Throughout, somewhere in the semester, we'll talk more about all this stuff because it's interesting how, how was it that um, people from all over Greece were um, to um, come to think of themselves as belonging to one, what we would today call nation, despite being separated from each other and, and not able to really travel except for with extreme difficulty from one to another and all that. Um, there will be various routes that will point back to some of these ideas again. Uh, for now, though, it's good just to see the relationship between these words, politics, polity, and policy, okay? So just get an idea of how they kind of um, melt into each other. Now we get to the fun stuff. All right, 18th, 19th century literature used this word a lot more often than we do today. Politic or more commonly impolitic. What does it mean? Of an action seeming sensible and judicious under the circumstances. The way that this word grew is it grew into an idea of doing the right thing. But it really comes down to the idea of doing what someone civilized does. In Rome, civis, C-I-V-I-S, is as close as you can come to polis, and that's where you get the word civil, or civilized, okay? So to be politic is kind of the Greek-derived version of civil in Latin, okay? So to be politic is to do the right thing, but in particular, to act as though one is from a polis, as opposed to what? As opposed to not being from a polis, living in the woods, living in the um, mountains, uh, far away from um, civilization, you know, one step away from the animals. Now, of course, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that that was the cliche about those who didn't belong to a polis in ancient Greece. That was the cliche about those who didn't belong to a kiwis in Rome. You were either from there or you were uncivilized. All right, you were not of a polis, not of a kiwis. 
okay? So the opposite of that is impolitic, and you guys know that because you know two things. You know that the in means not, and you know that in sometimes turns into M when it's before certain letters, one of them being a P. It's all about making things easier to pronounce, okay? That's what it always comes down to when it comes to things changing, whether it be consonants or vowels. Impolitic is easier to say than inpolitic. Inpa. You have to go a little further than going mpa, mpa, mpa. All right, now we take this idea a little further. We have someone being politic or a decision being politic or something like that, um, being, you know, conforming to the idea of being from a polis. And then you have this uh, word polite, which there's a little bit of debate about where this word comes from. Most places you look will say it comes from a verb in Latin meaning to polish. And so if someone is polite, it means they're polished. Okay, well, maybe, maybe not. Others believe it comes from this root, polis, meaning um, kind of a, an extension of this idea of politic. To be polite is to be civilized, to be from a polis. So I just want to throw that out to you guys because I want you to see how it is a nice offshoot of this idea of politic. Okay, to be polite. And rude, by the way, um, that's from the German side of things, and that means uh, rough. And so, Given that, that's, that's a big reason why a lot of people will, will believe that polite comes from the Latin word meaning to polish, because it's kind of the opposite of rough. Um, but I just wanted to throw that out at you guys. All right, now we get into a whole other realm when we talk about the police of a given society, which is a relatively late word uh, through, the old, through old French, not, not uh, from Rome through Old French, this idea of an offshoot of the polis. What is it? It's, it's those who are politic, but also those who enforce being politic in the population. So it's one thing to choose to be politic. It's another to be so impolitic that you break the law, all right? And so first you have to have a law code. Then you have to have those who enforce the law. And that's the order. You don't have people enforcing the law before you have the law. All right, and so that's the idea behind the word police. Isn't that interesting? So that comes from the root polis, meaning those who maintain order, the sort of order that you expect from people living in a polis, living in a, in a society, living in a civilized manner. Then you get the extension of the polis, the metropolis. In ancient Greek, mater is the word for mother. So it means the mother polis, the mother city-state. What does that mean? Okay, that was mainly at referring to Athens at the height of their power in the fifth century BC after the Persian Wars. And so there was this idea um, after Athens started this club called the Delian League where they insisted on everyone who wanted to be protected from future um, battles with the Persian Empire to join it in order to you know, pay tribute each year to Athens to join collectively in this in this organization that would fight together against any future continuation of the Persian Wars, which didn't happen, by the way, but they, there was no way for them to know it. So Athens pretty much established um, herself as the metropolis of the rest of Greece, the mother city-state, the mother polis. And that's where you get the idea, and that's how it's extended in our world. You know, whenever you talk about a metropolis, talk about the central, as it says here, the capital or chief city of a country or region. When you talk about cosmopolitan, uh, cosmopolitan the Paul comes from polis. Okay, and don't forget, that's the Greek equivalent to kiwis in Latin, which um, is connected to the idea of being civilized. Okay, and so the cosmopolitan, familiar with and at ease in many different countries and cultures. So when so, kind of the, the idea of a jet setter, someone who's comfortable all over the world. I, I have a, a friend in particular in mind right now where he travels the world all the time and it's like you know, he's in his bedroom no matter where he is. And it's, it's pretty amazing to live that way. Um, he has the kind of work where he has to do that all the time. And it's, it's an amazing thing. And that's the idea, to be cosmopolitan. So that's a good adjective for him. Uh, maybe all of us know someone like that, um, lucky enough to live like that. And then, of course, there's the extension of that idea with the, the drink cosmopolitan. What's that? You know, the, the image of being someone who travels all over the world. And then really, let's face it, that really means rich. So, you know, all those associations with cosmopolitan and um, that, that lifestyle. Okay. Um, <clears throat> how about the magazine? So we're extending this idea of the image 
of a cosmopolitan lifestyle, a lifestyle where the polis is all over the place for you, right? Think about it. So originally you were only from one polis in ancient Greece. This idea of being cosmopolitan means that your polis is anywhere and everywhere. Why? Because what is cosmo? What is that, you guys? Yes, it comes from the cosmos, the idea of the entire universe. So it really means, cosmopolitan means your polis, your home polis, is anywhere in the universe. And that's where the cosmos part comes from. But now, let's take it one step further. So there's the cosmos. Now get ready. What the heck is going on? Cosmetics? Cosmetics come from the fact that uh, just like with cosmopolitan, it comes from the root cosmos, meaning not cosmos as universe, but rather cosmos itself comes from a Greek term meaning order. Cosmeo in ancient Greek, the verb means to order things, to put things in order. And so the cosmos means the ordered or the arranged state of the world, right? So, so cosmos means arranged. So when you talk about cosmetics, and the root would be the cosm, C-O-M, C-O-S-M. Uh, cosmetics means that you're arranging the face, right? You're arranging the face the way that if you believe in God, God arranged the universe. If not, then natural selection or whatever. So there's that direct connection there um, between arranging the planets and, and the satellites and all the whatever in the universe and arranging the various aspects of the face. So they all have a kind of cosmetic uh, appeal uh, to, to others, I guess. When in the yourself. course of human events, it becomes necessary. Forget about necessary. That's necesse in Latin. That just means necessary. So that's tautological. Not much to build on from there. For one people to dissolve the political bands, that's as far as we've gone. So check it out. What have you learned so far? Course from Kuro, human from Humus, events from Wenio, um, people from Popolus, dissolved from Solwo, and political from Polis. The idea here is that when you read your Declaration of Independence, you are going to know what the heck it means. 